name is Liz. Welcome back to my sewing room for the fourth and final part in my How to Use Your Sewing Machine series. Today, I'm going to put your knowledge from the first three lessons to work so you can start making some awesome projects. When I started sewing in eighth grade, our handwork teachers sat us down at our sewing stations and had us complete a sewing driving course. And that's what we're going to do in a little bit. Hopefully, you've managed to wind your bobbin and thread your machine. Now I'll show you how to take your first stitches and make them perfect by adjusting the tension. Plus, you'll pick up a few basic sewing tips. For this step, you'll need at least two, four, or six inch squares of fabric. Right now, your needle should be threaded and you will have brought your bobbin thread up by holding the tail of your top thread, turning the hand wheel towards you, and pulling the tail upward. Okay, let's begin by placing your squares under the presser foot and lowering the presser foot lever. The tails of your thread should always be trailing behind the machine. Your top thread needs to pass through a notch in the presser foot and your bobbin thread should be going in the same direction. Before I begin sewing, I have one of the most valuable tips I can ever give. Be sure to hold onto the tails of these threads and don't let go. You can pinch them or I like to just wrap them around my finger once or twice. This does two things. One, it prevents the thread from pulling out of the eye of the needle. Two, it prevents your threads from being pulled in the feed dogs where they would create an ugly snarl on the back of your project. If that does happen, you can usually just clip the threads and remove the tangle, but you don't need to do that. It's just much easier to hold onto the tail. Now that I'm pinching the tails, I will lower the needle and begin sewing. Your default stitch should be a mid-sized straight stitch about 2.5 millimeters long. For this demonstration, I'm using a larger stitch so you can see what's going on. Remember, the foot controller functions like the gas pedal in your car. Pretend you're in your driveway and start slow. Take a few stitches, stop, reinforce your seam by making two or three back stitches. Usually you need to press the reverse button while you step on your foot pedal. Once you've reinforced your seam, continue sewing toward the corner of your square. Once you're about a half an inch from the edge, you'll make a 90 degree turn. This is a fundamental skill in sewing. To make a strong, crisp corner, you need to make sure that your needle is in the project. If necessary, use your hand wheel to adjust the needle position. Next, raise your presser foot lever, pivot your project 90 degrees, lower your presser foot, and continue sewing. That's how you turn a corner. Now it's time to check the tension. The stitches on your project should be perfectly formed on both sides. If this is not the case, you'll need to adjust your tension. Your sewing machine will have a knob that, with numbers that indicates the tension of your upper thread. Adjusting this knob is the easiest way to change the quality of your stitches. Here's how you can tell which adjustment needs to be made. If your top thread is too loose or the tension is too low, it will show through on the back of your project. Here you can actually see a few eyelets showing that it's extremely loose. If your tension is too high or too tight, your bobbin thread will show through on the top of your stitches. Continue making adjustments until your stitches are perfectly formed. Remember that your needle, your thread, and the fabric you're using, the material, the weight, and the number of layers will all affect the tension. Before you start sewing, make a sample swatch with the fabric and thread combination that you'll be using on your main project. Making adjustments before you start sewing will save time later on. Continue sewing around your square, spiraling towards the center. 
testing your hand-eye-foot coordination and adjusting your speed as you go. When I got this machine, I tried almost all of the stitches. That's a fun and easy way to get familiar with your machine and test its capabilities. You could even make a decorative stitch sampler, just sew the sides together and you have a cute cell phone case. I hope these tips give you the knowledge and confidence you need to sew straight seams, curves, and corners too. Remember, it's never too late to learn and you never know what you can do until you try. So go for it. Get your machine going. I'm Liz. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more from Lizzie's Sewing Room. Thank you.